Growing population, cities and businesses. For the past 150 years, humans have relied heavily on fossil fuels to power everything from light bulbs to cars to factories. In any discussion about climate change, renewable energy usually tops the list of changes the world can implement to fight against the worst effects of rising temperatures. One very promising source of energy is wind. We've harnessed wind for thousands of years for transport, for agriculture and now also for power. Wind turbines are used to convert kinetic energy from the wind into electricity. Engineers and scientists all around the world are working towards maximizing the efficiency of wind turbines. We are a group of six aeronautical engineering students at Imperial College London tasked with the challenge of designing a small wind turbine to be as efficient as possible. Alright, enough Hans Zimmer music, let's get started. The design challenge is subject to the following constraints. The turbine should have a horizontal axis design and rotate clockwise with a maximum angular velocity of 3000 rpm. The turbine must have a maximum tip to tip diameter of no greater than 450 mm and must be manufactured as one single part using 3D printing with ABS plastic. It must fit into a box of dimensions 400 times 150 times 100 mm and its tip speed ratio defined as the ratio of blade tip speed to wind speed should be between 3 and 8. The primary objective is to maximize the ratio of the power delivered to the turbine to the power available in the flow, also called the power coefficient, CP. Let's start with some wind turbine theory, shall we? A wind turbine can be considered as a rotating disk of resistance which takes out kinetic energy of the flow and converts it into mechanical energy. The slowing of the flow is represented by an induction factor. If the resistance is too high, the flow will divert around the turbine and the power extraction will be too low. If the resistance is too low, the flow will not slow down sufficiently to extract enough power. Doing the full analysis yields an optimal induction factor of one third corresponding to maximum power. Using this value, a theoretical CP of 0.5926 is apprehended, which is known as Betz's limit. To produce a rotation, turbine blades consist of many aerofoil sections producing lift perpendicular and drag parallel to the wind. We want our aerofoil to operate at a high lift to drag ratio for the corresponding optimal angle of attack. It is important to remember that the tangential velocity increases along the blade from root to tip. To maintain the optimal inflow angle, a twist must be applied. This twist angle beta must increase towards the root. For turbines, maximum blade efficiency is achieved when the circulation is approximately constant along the blade. Assuming high TSR and taking the optimum angle of attack, the core length should be inversely proportional to the distance from the hub. Theory shows that for small turbines and low Reynolds number, maximum power is obtained if the product of solidity, lift curve slope and TSR is approximately 2 or slightly higher. The aerodynamic forces perpendicular and parallel to the relative wind speed can be split up into forces acting in rotation and the wind directions, resulting in corresponding bending moments which are maximal at the root. Another force acts on the turbine due to the rotation of the turbine blades, the centrifugal force, which also has a maximum at the root. As a result of these forces and bending moments on the blade sections, corresponding stresses appear. The cross-sectional area of the blade at the root should be reduced to allow integration with the hub. However, as the maximum magnitude of the forces and moments acts at this cross-section, it means the blade root endures the maximum stresses. Therefore, it is critical to ensure that the stress values in this area do not exceed the critical stress value of the material. That's right, and excessive tip deflections should also be avoided. Theory done, but what's the plan for our design of the turbine? The one bladed design is the most aerodynamically efficient with the lowest drag. However, stability is an issue and adding a counterweight would overcomplicate the problem. Less aerodynamically efficient but much more stable are three bladed designs. These are used for real sized turbines because two bladed designs are prone to an effect called gyroscopic precession, resulting in stability problems. However, this should not be an issue in a wind tunnel experiment, so a two bladed design gives the best compromise between aerodynamic efficiency and stability. We chose to maximize the diameter of the turbine to the limit of 450 mm to obtain higher Reynolds numbers and therefore reduce drag. Maximizing the area covered by the turbine and taking advantage of the wind tunnel walls gives higher power extraction and an increase in CP. 
The turbine is optimized for a wind speed of 12 meters per second. Previous tests for two-bladed designs show that the optimal TSR lies around 5 to 6. We decided to aim for a TSR of 5 in order to avoid exceeding the limit of 3000 RPM. Having decided on the diameter, the Reynolds number was found to be of order 10 to the 5. For such low Reynolds numbers, the Airfoil Series SG6043 delivered the best lift to drag ratios and a corresponding optimal angle of attack of 8.5 degrees. It is also not too thin, so structural integrity should not be an issue. Now that we know our TSR radius, optimal lift coefficient and optimal angle of attack, the last step is to calculate the twist and chord variations along the blades. Betts' theory doesn't account for wake rotation losses, however, Schmidt's does, so we decided to go for the Schmidt's theory for our chord and twist calculations. Getting our inspiration from golf balls, we decided to add 20 dimples near the root on each blade. They create turbulent boundary layers, which delay separation, leaving a smaller wake and a reduced pressure drag. Our turbine was optimized for 2546 RPM, giving an estimated CP of 0.31, and the product of solidity, lift curve slope, and TSR is 2.4, which is ideal for small turbines. To cope with high centrifugal loads, an elliptical cross section was introduced at the root. The calculated stresses were much lower than the critical stress of 32 MPa, and the calculated tip deflections were also acceptable. But how did we actually design it? Having used Cubeblade, we confirmed our results for the optimal TSR of 5 at maximum CP. We managed to get a good idea about how our turbine should look like and how it should perform. The calculated twists and core distributions for our chosen airfoil were created in Creo. The 22 sections were then sequentially blended into the hub with a thicker elliptical section at the root in order to accommodate for the high expected stresses. We decided to make the nose cone as small as possible to maximize the blade length. Its parabolic shape is ideal for low wind speeds. The nose cone had to be hollowed inside to accommodate the hexagonal metal hub which was fixed in place with a control screw. In order to facilitate the maximum blade size of 450mm and simultaneously abide the printing box limit of 400mm, the hub was designed with an integrated hinge which allowed folding and joining during manufacturing. Structural integrity was ensured by using small pins and holes on the surface of the nose cone to increase gluing area. The dimples were created by applying small hemispherical cuts in a continuous pattern. To steer clear of imperfections such as flaking of the ABS material, a circular cylinder with finite thickness was added over the trailing edge. This was then sanded down during manufacturing. Let's look at manufacturing. Starting with a block of aluminium, we manufactured the hexagonal hub with a combination of lathing, drilling and milling CNC machines. The manufacturing process of the turbine itself can be split into three main sections, 3D printing, joining and finishing. It was important to ensure that the turbine was printed radially along the length of the blade so that the laminate provided maximum strength to cope with high centrifugal loads. Using the hinge mechanism, the turbine was then folded and glued together with an adhesive. Any excess adhesive was removed to make sanding easier. Choosing a radial printing direction resulted in a rough blade surface. Combinations of wet and dry sanding were used to create a good surface finish, which was necessary due to the presence of several post-printing and gluing defects. Making the defects smooth is important to reduce skin friction drag. The small cylinder along the trailing edges were also sanded down. The turbine should have been tested in a wind tunnel with wind speeds 6, 8, 10 and 12 meters per second, but it's 2020. That doesn't mean we couldn't think of some improvements. The sanding made the dimple smaller and less effective, so bigger dimples should have been designed for the desired effect. The same holds for the entire blade, sanding removed material from the blade surface, hence an additional thin layer should have been added to account for that. The hinge mechanism's design conflicted with the integration of the hub into the turbine as the pins restricted this from happening. Placing the pins further away from the center could have saved a lot of work. Maximum stresses at the root were way below the critical stress of ABS plastic. Using an airflow section instead of an elliptical section could have improved our aerodynamics. 